Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's February 14th, 2019. I'm out in front of the south shop where we keep the heavy equipment in the area that I've been working recently. And behind me, I have the 35 horse uh, cab and close um, hinder tractor with the uh, with the dual stage double auger uh, snowblower on, fr on the front of it. And there's a gearbox in the back of the tractor at the base that, that, uh, that runs a drive shaft up to the uh, PTO input for the uh, snow thrower. And that's the way I really like to blow snow so right up in front of me and inside of an enclosed cab. Both for keeping comfortable and uh, for safety reasons as well. And I'll explain that a bit in, in just a bit. So I've made vid videos in the past about using the snowblower and designing the property, especially the driveways, so that we minimize drifting occurring and snow accumulation in the driveways, the excess roads. And that's really worked out well. And I've discussed that in previous videos. In today's video, I wanted to tell you how I prepared for uh, the transition of snow um, for the meteorologist forecasting snow accumulation and then uh, transitioning to, uh, you know, freezing rain and ice. So one of the things I've learned to do over the years is not to completely clear up and, and snow blow right down to the hard surface area uh, when I'm getting ready for an ice storm coming. So uh, two days ago, we, I, I went out and I did some snow blowing when we had between 10 and 12 inches of snow. I cleared it up. It was still snowing pretty darn hard at that time and we still had some significant winds. The winds, even if it had stopped in the middle of me snow blowing, would have deposited some of that freshly deposited snow from the sides into the driveways areas and all. And I didn't clean up uh, access out back to the uh, woodshed or some areas. I, I just did what I thought was necessary so that we'd have access uh, in and out and be able to get a fire truck in here <laughs> if the, the need would arise as well. But when the meteorologist said, indicated, well, in the next 24 hours, we're going to have a significant amount of snow, which will transition to freezing rain, expect power outages, uh, you know, limbs will be down, and everybody needs to take it slow. Well, they closed the schools in the area and all, and indeed, uh, I, I went out and did the snow blowing. And I left about two inches of snow after I'd gotten done, two, two and a half inches of snow on all of the uh, driving surfaces or more in the areas that I hadn't cleared out. And indeed, we did get a lot of freezing rain, which, which ended up giving us two to two and a half inches of solid ice on top of the snow. And the reason that I wanted to have it that, that way was number one, if it's a little bit less than that, you can walk safely on top of the frozen ice that's on top of the snow. You'll crunch down through it. So you can move around without the fear of falling and potentially breaking, your, breaking a bone or hurting yourself, putting yourself out of commission. So that's one good reason. It was thicker than that this time. So we had to, uh, Theo wore ice cleats, and I was real careful uh, creating a path uh, for me to get back and forth. And so we had this slick ice on top of the snow and I waited until we started getting more snow. So yesterday afternoon and last night we got more snow. And so real early this morning I got, got up, got the uh, snow blower started, got the, uh, the, the tractor started and started blowing. And one of the advantages of having that that although it's compacted, that snow below uh, the couple inches of ice is, well, the tractor doesn't lose, lose as much traction. The ice gets fed in above the, the cutting blade on the base of the snowblower, and the augers more easily break it up into golf ball size or crystal, crystallized size of, of snow from the ice. You have to go a little bit slow when you're doing this because it's really, uh, you know, that, that snow blower can cut through snow that's deeper than the top of the, uh, of the snow blower itself. But I went pretty darn slow today because it really, it's a lot of, a lot of effort breaking up that ice and all. And when I went through it, you have a really nice, good base without the ice being attached to the, to the driveway surface or the lawn surface or whatever material there is. 
So if you have the opportunity and you're using a snowblower and you know that your, your, your snow is going to transition to freezing rain, I would say leave some snow down, go out and clear it out to the point where you're only going to have a couple inches, let the freezing rain get down, on, get uh, freeze on top of it, and then cle clear it out afterwards uh, and you can feed that into your uh, snowblower as well and you won't lose as much traction, you won't be spinning around, especially when you're on a crown or you're on some of the hillside areas where you can really, uh, a piece of equipment like this on ice, it can be dangerous, especially of narrow, narrow paths to go through. So I just wanted to share my thoughts with that, uh, about that topic, just in case anybody's interested in, in getting uh, some, some, some wisdom from, from uh, my poor experiences in the past. So if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and by all means, folks, have a super fantastic, have a super fantastic day. Bye-bye now.